If you don't want your sword's luster to fade, then you need a scabbard to protect that blade. Leather wrapped and pretty with a wooden core, making my own didn't feel like a chore. Hey again, friends. Lauren back with you. And a little bonus video on scabbards. Uh, both Danielle Clark and Velvet had uh, mentioned that it was pretty cool that I made my own scabbard and straps and they wanted to get a little more information about it. So we're going to do a little video about that today. But a bonus feature, I do have a sword in my collection that you can draw from your back. So a Roman gladius. Gladius means sword in Latin, by the way. So just a Roman sword for a legionary. It is short enough of a blade that if it were on my back, yes, I can draw that from my back. Again, I don't know why I would because the sword is still behind me and that was the main point of our last video on why you should avoid back scabbards. Yes, they're comfortable and they've had a lot of discussion on various um, Discord forums where we were talking about it. And sure, we can see we want the sword out of the way while we're traveling and we know that we would have to move it if we were getting closer to a fight or whatever, but we still don't see evidence for it. Uh, Roman soldiers are carrying it on their right side, probably a baldric, and they draw it like that. And it's in front of them. So it's ready to go. And it's done so it doesn't interfere with their shield hand because they've got that big scutum shield. Scutum just means shield. Um, and they've got their scutum and they've got their gladius. So we don't see the evidence of it still. So yes, there are ways to do that. But we don't see those historically. All right, but let's get on to my handmade scabbard. So for my Langs Messer from Lensknick Emporium, you can order scabbards from them, but I didn't. I made my own. And thanks to the help of the famed James Elmsley of the Elmsley typology for single edged medieval and Renaissance weapons, which this is, he gave me some advice. Uh, the most important piece was get all the clamps you have and then go get more clamps. You will need lots of clamps. And so, yeah, it takes about, I don't know, two dozen clamps or so to make a scabbard. <laughs> but it's a wooden core, so I had two boards that were slightly larger than the shape of the sword. And I basically built a little box. So I built, one side is, of course, higher than the other. It's a little wedge triangular shape because you need to be able to fit the back edge and the front edge of different widths. You need that to fit in the scabbard and you want a good fit. Build up the edges, wood glue, clamping, slowly making the sections, getting them all in order. Doesn't matter if you mess it up outside the scabbard, the work is done to get a good fit for the blade. Once that's done, line it with cloth, line the top piece with the cloth, glue, lots of clamps, get it all done. And if you glue it with the sword inside, you can cover this in a, like a cling film or plastic, and you'll see the fit is excellent. So you want a good pressure fit, but not that it sticks. You still want it to be easy to draw the sword from the scabbard, but you want that pressure. So I can hold it upside down and it doesn't come out. So it's fairly secure because the throat, this part of the scabbard, holds it in tight. The leather work I did myself. A um, lot of work, cut a big thick piece, very wide. The leather itself isn't that thick. It's what is it, five to six ounce, I think? Maybe a little less. And you wet, wet shape it. So you've got to soak the leather, and then you've got to wrap it. And a lot of work I do by hand, just shaping, pressing, and then use the same kind of, I have this, kind of, it's like the same wrap that you would use if you have a bag and you're wrapping it up for traveling. It's a, it's a cling film, it sticks to itself. It's a little heavier grade, a little stretchier. And I use that, cover it all up, let it dry. Once it's dry, take it off, cut, reshape, 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 a lot of work just to make sure that it's done. Plot all the stitching holes. Now there aren't as many stitch holes as I need, but I was also gluing it. So I just wanted it to be double thickness thread, wax cord I use. Stitch it up the side. This is the trickiest bit because I'm not using a metal shape, a little metal piece that goes on the end because it's just leather. Doing the work to really get that right is tricky because you'll shape it while it's wet and you'll try and cut it a little bit and then it'll shrink and it'll just shrink three millimeters in the wrong direction on one part and then you're like oh now i gotta fix it and i gotta put a little extra piece in so if you look close you can see there's actually 
the filler piece that I needed because it shrank in all the wrong way, obviously. But it was my first full scabbard build, and you learn as you go. On the front, of course, um, once I had the shape, the sizing done, you wet the leather, and I did embossing or engraving. I have some geometric patterns up near the top. Very popular to have geometric patterns in the Middle Ages, a lot of dots, lines, grids. I have nature motif, ivy leaves. Obviously, I like that simple two-tone kind of pattern of ivy and floral like that. You can see it on my top. That's why I chose to wear this one today. <laughs> and of course, there is the letter L for Lauren on there as well, in the midst of our growth of ivy all the way down. Once that all dries out again from the embossing, stain it with a nice mahogany brown color. Stands out really well. Make these dark leather straps. It's a two-point suspension system. We saw it in the last video. It sits on the hip. It really hugs nicely because it has these different lengths. They go in and it just sits perfectly. And it just moves, barely moves as I move. It feels very comfortable. You can wear it all day long. And so it makes for a really good scabbard. So that's just a little bit more because some people ask, they want to see a little bit more of the scabbard I made. And there it is. So it's a wooden core built like a very long box out of basswood. Or is it basswood? It's B-A-S-S. -S. I don't know. But it's pretty good wood. It's a little stronger than balsa wood. So it's still easy to cut, but it doesn't, doesn't crack in your hands quite so easily as a balsa wood. It doesn't deform. You can't really press it the same way as the balsa wood, so it will hold up to building a scabbard, but it's still easy enough to work with. Made that box, lots of clamps in order to get it to all that wood glue to stay. Now I, I have a leather weld as well, which I use for this, so that's more like a high glue that would be medieval, except it's a, a modern version of it, but still that's a little step closer to the uh, historical accuracy. So wherever I can use the high glue that I have, I use it and double suspension, medieval buckles, and like I said, a very good pressure fit. I hold it upside down, doesn't fall out. So that is my scabbard. And in the video description, I'm going to put a link to a channel where they're making a uh, scabbard for a double-edged sword. Uh, the first part is out, and it's different. It uses more wood than I've used, but for a double-edged sword, something that's symmetrical, you kind of cut these sword shape U channels and then stack up the layers that's where the sword goes and then you kind of put your supporting boards and then once you've got the fit and everything done then you can trim and cut it down so there's it's a different process still similar still a lot you gotta clamp it down and you gotta use glue and you gotta do all the work I'm looking forward to the second part of that but yeah a quick tour of my Langsmesser scabbard that I made because it was asked for and um, I want to say thank you for watching I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Do remember, subscribe and share it and like videos and comment. If you comment on something that you might want to see, like Danielle and Velvet did, then we end up with a video about it. Thanks very much. Have a great day. And keep your blade dry and safe. And we'll talk to you soon.